It was President Woodrow Wilson who said, the proof that the gospel is divine is the preaching it has survived. After all we've done to it, it has survived. Of all the lies we've done, all the pre presentations that were wrong. Am I preaching yet? Is anybody getting anything out of this? So I'm going to tell you. The thief on the cross did not have a good gospel presentation. The Christ that he saw was a wounded, dying animal, wheezing. He wasn't delivering the eloquent words of the Sermon on the Mount. And you say, well, Jesus, he must have heard him at some point. He was on death row. He never got to hear him. But somehow through his own pain and somehow through the pain of Christ, the power of Jesus came through anyway. Imagine at that depth of the Christ being tortured and bloody and beaten and crucified, his eyes still projected a compassion that could save a man on death row dying right next to it. Made him say something he never thought he'd say. He said to his partner, quit cursing this man. We deserve what we're getting, but he's innocent. And then he looked at Jesus and said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Now I'm going to stop you right now and tell you. You are like that thief on the cross that's seen the underbelly of religion. You've seen Christianity beaten, misrepresented, commercialized, and hypocrites. You say, Mar, I won't go to church. Those people are hypocrites. Well, if your dentist was a hypocrite, would you stop brushing your teeth? <laughs> now I'm going to finish with one other word. Compel. I want to read the Bible. In verse 23 of Luke 14, then the master said to his servant, go to the highways and the hedges and urge and constrain them to yield and come in. What you're about to hear is very controversial. Is your seatbelt fastened? I don't agree with those pastors that make getting converted a polite experience. I don't believe in it. I don't believe you, this, this idea here. If you want to get saved, look at me. Look at you. I said, everyone close your eyes. And if you want to get saved, just look at me. You don't have to walk up here. And then they say, if you decide you want to at least experiment with Jesus, talk to us in the back. An embarrassing, polite and totally like this is a kind of a not a good thing to do that's the projection the bible doesn't say that you know that i'm not going to give a long altar call tonight but i have the right to i have the right to you say well that's not scriptural you need to go to acts chapter 2 it says with many other words peter compelled them saying save yourself from this doomed generation now i have the right to go on i could go on right now i have the right to erode your resistance to god for an hour if necessary i do but i won't i'm not even going to do it five more minutes is anybody here so you woke up one morning and you're going to find out where he said, compel. What does it mean? What does it mean? I'm going to tell you right now. You woke up one morning and there was an amber alert. And you saw a picture of a 10-year-old girl. You saw her face, her eyes, and her hair color. And by some strange coincidence, about sunset, you were driving by a park and there she was on a swing by herself and you don't know why her kidnapper isn't with her by the same token there's only one reason that you're sitting under this tent 
is you've already overcome the power of the devil because Satan would never have given you permission to be here right now. So you've already won one battle by sitting where you are. He's out there saying, I thought I had them. I thought I controlled them. What are they doing listening to this crazy man? So what are you going to do? You're going to pull your car over. You're going to walk over to that little girl on the swing and do modern preaching. I know that you are offended by men and I know that you think I'm strange, but I'd like you to pray and consider the thought of going home. You might say something else. Little girl, do you want me to go and get someone for you? I'm kind of busy right now and uh, church has gone a long time and our best tithers are not going to tithe anymore if we go past noon. Am I preaching yet? And so when you see that little girl and you use the word compel, look at me young lady, you are getting in my car and you're going to get to the police station and tonight you're going to sleep in your own bed and you're going to be safe in the arms of your mom and dad. That's an altar call. Don't tell me you're going to go home and think about this. You don't think about should I jump out off the railroad tracks when the locomotive is about to crush me. You don't think about Oh, I need time to consider the cost. You're paying a debt daily in emotion and in freedom and in sanity. You're paying an, an expensive price that makes discipleship to Christ look like nothing. That's why he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because compared to what the people looked like to him when he had compassion, you cannot go on the way you're going right now. No, you can't fake being a Christian anymore. You got to know him. You can't let that hardness and bitterness and brokenness and pain burn a hole in your soul. No, sir, I won't let you. I won't let you out of my influence right now. If you're broken, if you're sad, if you're addicted, if you're hurting, there is a God, there is a Christ ready to stand up strong. Get the devil off your back and turn you around.